what is up everyone tony here with a very quick tutorial on how to create a wood floor on v-ray for sketchup i wanted to talk about this material because i want to explore the different options and what we can really do with the reflection in v-ray for sketchup i have a very simple scene set up here as you can see i got my frame buffer open i got my viewport in the middle and i got both of my material editors so we can play around with the options a little bit now the first thing I like to do here is to add some volume into our material and we're going to do that by adding a bump map into this material. So we're going to play around with the options and we'll see how far we can go with the bump. We're going to scroll down and we're going to enable that option by checking on the box and we're also going to edit our mapping texture by clicking on the M. From our drop down menu we're going to select bitmap. And we're going to select the grayscale version of our diffuse texture. Now I got a few options here, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to pick this one, which happens to give us the best results. I'm going to click OK. Now we got a value of one here and we're going to keep this default value because I want you guys to understand what the bump map is really doing. So we're going to render this and give it a test. As you can see the bump map is very very strong, the material is very rigid and you can almost scrape your knees if you play around in a floor like that. So we're going to decrease that value between 0 0.3 or 0 0.01 sorry. And we're going to settle that down a little bit because that's how a real wood floor looks like. And we're going to preview that and we're going to test render it so that we can see the decreased value in action. As you can see, the bump effect is definitely still there, but it's very, very minimal so that you can't really see it. But when we do add the reflection, we're going to be able to see those bits of volumes that are still there. So we're going to add our reflection next and we're going to right click on our material. We're going to go over to add layers and we're going to select reflection. And right away the Fresnel's ref, uh, feature is already all applied by default. So we can see that when we click on our mapping right there. And we're going to give a test render as well with that default uh, Fresnel and we're going to see how sharp and how clean this uh, reflection is. Like I mentioned before, you can see the bits of the bump still there and this looks like a very clean glossy floor, but that's not essentially how a real floor looks like. A real floor looks a lot more uneven and less reflective in certain areas, but our first step is gonna be to blur that reflection. So we're going to add a value of 0.7 and we're going to intensify our IOR value so that we can increase that glossiness a little bit. And we're gonna be able to get a different version of a floor, a much more uh, blurry reflection and definitely a lot more noisy, but we'll be able to fix that up in the end. So you can see the sharp reflection right now, but we're going to take care of that once the render starts. And there you have it. A lot more blurry reflection not so you can't really see the definitions of the light in there and this is I believe this is a good value to play around with but the next step from here is to map that reflection so we're gonna have to create some uneven areas some areas where the, the reflection is a lot more strong and some areas where the reflection is a lot weaker and what we're going to do is add a reflection map to our reflective glossiness so we're going to click on the M here and we're going to follow the same procedure we did to be able to add a bump map and we're going to go pick another grayscale version of our texture. Now this version is a lot more defined. It definitely can be played around in Photoshop so that you can see uh, what it does. But I'm going to select two versions so that we can see the difference and what the effects of the two textures have on our reflection. The very first one is going to be a live update as you can see it changed just now and you you can now see that the reflection is map is not the same on every level it's a bit different some areas is a lot stronger than others and it's a lot more uh, clear a lot more visible 
and that's essentially what the floor is supposed to look like in my opinion I mean there's tons of ways you can go about this but this is just one of the ways to channel and to execute this concept now we're going to try the other version of the bitmap so I can make my point on the visibility or the mapping of the reflection this texture is a lot darker so there should be a lot of areas where the reflection will not be seen and that's essentially my point here where the dark areas within your texture uh, there will be less reflections and the areas where there's a lot of white there will be more reflections so you can imagine it yourself that uh, an area where there's gray is going to be a very mid-tone reflection as you can see the reflection is still there uh, but it's just mapped in a way that it's more realistic and it's more um, how can I say it's a lot better if you would like to increase the quality of your reflection you will have to increase the value of your subdivision you can definitely place with values like 22 44 but as long as it's better than 8 or I would say stick around above 16 you should do pretty okay and that's going to help you clear up a lot of the noises that will come up with blurring your reflection and so so keep that in mind as a tip that does increase your render time but you want to make sure you get the best quality and not, not necessarily a crappy material thank you so much for everyone that has watched this tutorial i hope you guys like it give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials that i'll be doing soon thank you very much and i'll see you guys next time